where your hand looks like it's coming out of my anus. I have seen the gifts. Hold on now. Johnny Chuckles. I've seen the gifts. It looks like I'm hurling you into the sky. It or like I just shot you and your arm out of my ass. Okay, you know what? Good to know. Next time we do this job, next convention, I will give myself a, like, a look. So it looks like I'm flying backwards out of your body. Like with the vomit face. I'm, Throw my hat backwards, so it's moving. Like, Whoa! Yeah, I like developing my chair jump, but this is just great. A, I gotta figure out where I'm going. Oh. Like, no. My safety net, Robbie. I need to hold that so damn chair. So I'm not in your anus. So I don't break my face. No, no. You don't come out of my anus. That's Rich's chair. Come on, that's not a fun safety <laughs> Cool, cool. All right, so, so, my bad, guys. You just got an upgrade. I'm going to live in Matt's bottom until the next convention. That's, that's how we're Anyway, how are you guys? Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. How are you? Uh, uh, Robbie, I heard you just gave a whiz-bang tour of the city. Uh, I did. I gave a whiz-bang tour of Seattle. Thank you for joining me on the bus tour. If I, I wasn't there, I'm sorry I wasn't there, but if I had to guess, out of all the people on the tour, I bet you you knew less about Seattle than everyone. My it was out of control how much more they knew than me. And I was, like, you know, the first tour guide ever that every every statement that came out of my mouth was a question like, hey, that that's the Space Needle? <laughs> you know what's funny? It's really like, they should retitle it. Not Rob tours, not Rob gives you a tour of Seattle. It's like, 50 people volunteer to tour Rob around Seattle. <laughs> It really is, it is, it's like, that was this, there's this, get history, it's great. You learn so much, right? Like, when, anything special about Seattle? Well, the, uh, the Space Needle was, uh, was built as part of, part of the World's Fair in oh, 1962? Yeah. Question mark. Uh, they, 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 yeah. and, uh, and right now, they're remodeling it and, and giving part, you know, part of a glass floor at the top so you can look all the way down. Oh, oh, so I, I, I still like you getting the question. So you can look all the way down? <laughs> A glass floor? Uh, yeah, so it was, uh, oh yeah, but it was, it was that thing. So that's awesome, and then you, how was karaoke? How, how was that? Awesome? How was karaoke? Uh, and then several people come up to me and say, Matt nearly killed me. Like, it was a good one. I, they nearly killed me. It was so incredible. It really was. The energy was so on point, and uh, everybody was here, and the performances were amazing. Good singers? It was song after song where you go, like, all right, I'm going to sing this one, you know. Uh, I'm a cowboy, and everybody's screaming, and then you're like, my voice is gone, I'm going to sing tomorrow night, so I'm not going to sing the next one. And then, you know, Lady Gaga, Miley Cyrus, come on. And you scream on. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You do what you got to do. Your hands are tied. Exactly. And who was, who was on stage with you last night? Adam Fergus? I had Adam Fergus. And David Hayne Jones. Jones. David Hayne Jones. With his sick dance moves. Sick dance moves. I had Bree and I had new girl Lisa, who is incredible. Lisa Mary. Yes. Yeah. Wow, I love Lisa. She's ball up here. Just having a blast with the people and a hell of a voice on her. She's around this evening. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah, yeah. She's we performing. Got, we got Lisa Mary joining us tonight. Word on the street is she's got a heck of a set of pipes. Like, yeah, she's it's a, amazing. Yeah. I'm excited to be singing with her. That's awesome. And, uh, and Matt Cohen, you're going to be singing a new song. What? I new mean, song? second time. Yeah, but it's like, I feel like it's the first time. Yeah. It's like Vegas is like, oh shit, here I go. Oh, <laughs> hold on, it's over. And then yeah. now we're going to rethink it and do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't recall it going better than that. But, <laughs> no, but like in Vegas, it's like the, the four days and it's all this energy. And then you finally get up there on Saturday night and you're just like, ah, it's a new song. I want to honor Robbie, the band. Played that song so well, like, like just that's all that's dude. Did you get up there and I like forget to sing? So I'm like, oh, man. Oh, shit. oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. Are we allowed to say what song it is? Or is that, uh, sure. What song is it? It's a uh, Joker and the Thief by uh, Wolfmother. Uh, Wolf Mother. Yeah, it's a great song. It's a good tune. I wasn't familiar with it until you did it. It's a good song. Well, it's a, I wanted to do it in Vegas. It's the theme. It's the theme song from the trailer of Hangover. And I figured, well, most of you in Vegas are hungover, so I just. I would, I would give you that song as a montage to your headache. Okay. Yeah. Done. All right, well, I guess we should dive into the questions. Let's do it. Do we do it? All right. Over here. Right there. You. Okay. Um, hi. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good, you? Good. Um, so, 
By the way, my dad touched your hand the other day and he freaked out about it. It was a big moment. Yeah, it was awesome. a big moment for him. Anyway. Yeah. I went out. I went out in the audience and shook some hands when I did my MC over. You do that. You do. That's a good thing you do. You're like Robbie likes to get out there and be one of the people and press yeah. the flesh. Yeah. I, you probably got some votes for the year upcoming election. Try. Let's try. Um, sorry. Um, so I was wondering because this is my first convention, so I've never heard any of your guys' stories about pranks, and I was wondering if um, Jared and Jensen or Misha have. Pardon my language, dicked around with you or not, like, during filming. Meet around with people? <laughs> dick around with dick all the time. <laughs> I forgot that that's your nickname. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave this to you, Robbie, because you always tell a funny story about working with them and, and them well, putting their foot on your privates or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a that's, a, that's a good story. A, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was going to say uh, that stealing our cell phones, that's always... Oh, that's not funny. Yeah, that's awful. Um, <laughs> they're not... Jared's not a good person. That's really what I'm talking about. For me, when I worked in the show a couple seasons ago, uh, real serious scene, God talking to the boys, and uh, they had them, I had them like here and here, and I'm, so we're trying to read like, lots of dialogue and just talking to the boys. And underneath the table, Jared's big old leg is like playing footsie with the inside of my leg. <laughs> and then I'm looking at Jensen to make it better. Like, can you help me out here? There's cam two cameras on me. And Jensen's going, he's making faces when I look away. And Jensen's going, <laughs> and so I get no help from him. Uh, and then you just, and then I, I start busting up, and the director's kind of getting frustrated. He's like, Rob, what, what do you need? What do you need, buddy? That guy was, um, what's his name? Tom? You know, who doesn't do as many. Anyway, he did that Saturday Night Fever guy. Oh, John Battle. Yeah. yeah. So he's getting frustrated, because, you know, and I was like, I finally was like, you, someone tell him to stop! <laughs> <laughs> that is not my fault! I didn't know you got busted by the director for it. That's yeah. kind of funny. Oh, yeah. And they love it. They're not going into me. No. Um, yeah. So, and, and what Rob was saying about cell phones is true. Jared is not a, he's not a good person. And <laughs> if you leave your cell phone out near him, he takes it upon himself to try to destroy your life. Uh, it's not simply about messing with your phone. It's, it goes beyond that. Um, the one and only time I actually left my phone in the green room, never again, uh, I left the green room. He took it, I'll try to run briefly through what he did. He took unholy pictures of himself, Jensen, and Misha. Um, one of them is so foul and disturbing, uh, and it's, 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 it's Jared himself in the pose, doing the thing, and uh, he then also texted my wife like I was texting another woman, and actually texted my wife. Thanks. Monica, sorry, I gotta cancel dinner, I gotta get home to the family, uh, but this weekend was amazing. Thank you. So that was great. Um, the good news is my wife knows that no other woman would ever have me, so that's not like, that's not like, uh -huh, okay, I'm gonna get my eggs. Um, but, <laughs> the, uh, I saw this unholy picture of Jared, I still have, I made it the contact, this pretty much it. When my wife calls, it's that picture of Jared that comes up. Because that's what he did to my phone. He, did, he made that happen. I'm like, ah! But, in the same way that France has left the German gun emplacements along the coastline to remind themselves of what can happen when you let your guard down, I've left that picture up as a contact info for my wife. Never again. Hashtag never again. Uh, he did. He did that, and he did. Uh, he, he took, like I said, took the photos, did that, and then I thought I had cleaned it all up. And um, Misha came to me and said, "I really shouldn't tell you this, because a joke's a joke, but uh, I wouldn't send any emails until you check your digital signature." <laughs> Drop of irony in his, in his eyes. Dude, 
You left your phone in the green room. <laughs> and I go like, you did? You wrote there? And I found myself apologizing. <laughs> I'm sorry? Won't happen again? I had Stockholm Syndrome. Show the picture! Never. Or why haven't you guys tried to get back at him? Or have you, it just backfired, like the day that Misha tried to get back at uh, Jared and it backfired on him? No. Have you guys tried anything? I, I, I never have tried to get back, but I will say this. At one point, somebody, I think it was Adam Fergus, took Jared's phone and had a, a t tweeted out something that, that insinuated that Jared was phallically challenged. <laughs> Adam Ferguson when really did that. And every single one of us saw it, and here's how we all, we all sort of like, oh. Huh. <laughs> Only Matt Cohen, who's the nice one, reached out to Jared. And Jared tells a story about it too. He's like, oh, it's kind of like middle of the night, whatever, I'm in my hotel. I said, you get a text from Cohen. Cohen didn't text you that much, so I assume, oh, it's got to be important. Cohen needs something to remember. He's like, dude. Check your Twitter. So I think that's what you said. So he goes on and he finds something. Son of a bitch. And then he goes back. Jared said, I go back to my phone and look. Radio silence for every other group right now. Only oh, Matt Cohen reached out. And if it had not been for Matt Cohen, that would have been on all night. Well, I think that, too, I think the rest of us saw, saw the tweet. And we're like, yes! Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> so I got it back. He, he stole my phone one time and tweeted out, I hate children. Yeah. So that was, yeah. And, and, and Rob, and let's be like, in all honesty, we joke about this, but we didn't, I mean, Jared did that. I mean, he got pranked and it was a, it was a harsh tweet and we didn't do, we didn't do nothing. We didn't do nothing. We retweeted the shit out of him. Yeah. We retweeted the <laughs> And, uh, just, we just got, get behind that thing. <laughs> and just to clarify, while the, while the wolves were attacking, attacking the wounded beast himself, I thought, this is a great opportunity to buy an insurance policy for myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's so smart. So now Jared comes to me and says, "Hey, who should I have with this week?" And I say, "Any of them, man. Any yeah, any of them. All of you, you're right. You're fine. You back the right horse. Smart, so safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Good afternoon. Hello. Um, I have a question for Rich and Bob. All right. Guys, well, here we are. When you guys do your welcome to the con speech. Or your back and forth banter. Is any of that scripted or do you just fly off to see your pants? It's all scripted. Rob and I, uh, we get together every, every week. <laughs> I get the, the, uh, the quill and the ink. Every week. He and then we prepare notes, show my scroll, show the paper. Funny! Um, <laughs> I think, I remember when we wrote the whole sequence about you keeping drugs in your b-hole. And, uh, I was real proud of that. That was just good old fashioned writing. And we had this whole song in it called Bobby Bobby B-hole, people hold Bobby. Um, Bobby got drugs in the b-hole. Bobby 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 B-hole drugs. It's just so he really did come up with this on stage one time. Um, it's one of those things too where I, I always try to like, the chance question we know, none, none of it is real. <laughs> it's all improvised and... We, we never even talk about what we're gonna do, we look yeah. on stage and just start winging it. And, uh, and that was one of those where I was like, I tried to play along and I went to get, wait, what are we talking about? Oh, no, 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 no. When Rick does a bit like that, he, it's like, it's like, it's building a little like card that won't come back. It's like, hmm, bro, oh, where, there it goes. And I'm like, no, 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 get that card, get that card, somebody grab that card. It's quite good. It's a, there's a song being made about my, my people. I'm gonna be home, drugs in the be home, oh. No, no. Put the drugs in the be home, stick the point up there, oh. I look back at the band, the band's going, Oh, there's drugs up that beehole. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, they're like walking into the changes. We're doing beehole in A minor, guys. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. I know, it's funny, because we'll do these things, and I'll say it, and it's right, like, yeah. We're doing, oh, we're doing beehole. Uh, 
that happens an awful lot to us. I mean, even how we intro the band, it's fun to watch, like, Borja Reactor. Remember, I remember we, it, we uh, sort of, we anointed him the racist bassist, which, I uh, remember, remember him being real surprised by that nickname. And every time we talk about Billy being, uh, you know, a philanderer, he gets, uh, he gets tickled. Anyway, it's all, it's all made up. That's actually my favorite part of what we do at the business. It's coming out on stage and making stuff up. I think that's the whole thing. It is, it is literally improv theater at its, at its finest and most fun for us to come out and just start thinking around and see where the joke goes. And inevitably, it goes somewhere. Sometimes it's funny. And sometimes it's so not funny that we find it hilarious. I mean, there are times when you will look and see the band doubled over, robbing me, weeping, and people out there going, what is, uh, what's up, Kiel? What is Kim Rose coming on? <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for your question. It's one of my favorite parts of the con. Oh, thank you. You guys doing awesome, Jack. Thank you very much. You. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm Gracie. Uh, and I was just wondering, uh, this is for Ron. Uh, I was wondering if you were ever planning or wanting to do a loud and sweaty panel. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. A loud and sweaty panel. That'd be really fun. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's, that's always fun because we do a meet and greet, you know, and those guys are not as used to talking, you know, openly, publicly, they're not public figures per se, right? So they, so it's always, I think, interesting, but I really have to sort of, you know, I'm like, do you want to take this one? Because yeah. they all look to me to answer the question like, no. Oh, you know this answer. You know, like, Borja, uh, what do you like for breakfast? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Um, so yeah, no, that would be a blast. I know that the guy, I think they're, they're going to do a tour of Pittsburgh. The band. Oh, yeah, the band is giving a tour. Yeah. Because Borja's from Pittsburgh. Tour of Pittsburgh, so the band's going to do a tour. I love that. More, the more we can sort of incorporate that, because they're great. Just three of the really sweetest fellas. This is slightly off, off topic, but I got to tip my hat to you guys for your new line of t-shirts that are the funniest three of the days. It started with... Uh, Borloha, Bor, Borloha, 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 and then it Bor, was Borlando, Borlando, and now it's uh, Borvana, Borvana. It was good. We were, we, we sorely missed an opportunity to what happens in Borja stays in Borja. Well, I don't know what is it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> man, hey, what happens in Borja stays in Borja will be a shirt next year. There's no way it won't. And it's gonna, and I can't wait to see the art of Borja. <laughs> It's just like Borja's face like this bent over. Like a sick doctor slug and he's just like, hashtag drugs and bugs and people. It's like, yep. Uh, it's gonna be great. Now we got Borja. We've already got one from, from Montreal too, so that was always really fun. Well, uh, don't tell me what it is. I'll be yeah. surprised. All right, thank you for your question. Anyway, thank you so much. Well, uh, that would be a great idea, so hopefully you so can You, right there. Hi. Hey. How are you? Good, you? Good. Cool. My question is for Matt. Matty? Hey. Hi. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you'd ever want to direct. Yes. Good <laughs> talk. I, uh, I love this business. I really do. You know, I, I love every part of it, the writing, all of it. You know, I can only do one aspect of it okay right now, you know, but I watch Rodney Wright, I watch Rich Direct, I watch, you know, all these people around me. There's such, so much talent in my friend circle and involved in this show. And, uh, I want to do it all. I want to be able to do everything they do. And luckily, I'm, I'm learning from the best, so I just sit back and take notes, and we'll get there. We're developing, hopefully, by the end of this year, I'll have a short film just swinging around the festival, so. Thank you for it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. Hi, guys. I'm Katie. Um, I just wanted to ask Richard a question, that's okay. Sure. Um, I wanted to ask if you or Mark Pellegrino know, knew that all the way back in season five, when Lucifer stabbed Gabriel, if actually the Angel Blade wasn't going to work, he wasn't actually killing his brother, because now we have the Archangel Blade. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Um, we know, as actors on the show, we know next to nothing. We know what the script says at that moment, mm. and any designs they have beyond that, I mean, I think I'm speaking up right for everybody. We have no idea. I mean, literally, I don't think you knew you were God when you started as the prophet child, correct? I didn't know. I started out as, you know, trickster. I didn't know if it needed to be Gabriel, and I didn't know Gabriel was going to do any of the things Gabriel did. The writer, I'm not sure the writers do. I think they kind of <laughs> discover as they go. Or maybe they do. I don't know. But no, I had no idea. Because I know, like, me and my 
sisters when we were watching the episode, we were all just like, no, 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 that doesn't work. What is the Archangel Blade? And we were just like literally screamed when you came on the show. You knew that back then when the, oh no, you would have been in knee pants when I that episode. <laughs> You're, you're, you're like, gaga goo goo, gaga goo. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> you. Hi. Hey. Uh, first off, I'd like to say, Rob, you're very talented. Thank you. Matt, I hope you have as much fun with your new cast as you do with this cast. Yeah, yeah probably not, but I'll try. <laughs> and my question is for Richard. Uh, as of recently, what's it like to direct yourself in a fight scene? Tricky. <laughs> Without getting any Tricky. Um, so, I, so to, to put a point on that, there's episode 1320, I direct, to direct. <laughs> and uh, uh, not to say too much, but it turns out I, I'm also in it. So I had to direct myself, which we did at Kixicon. You know, we made our own show where we were on both sides of the lens. So we've done it once, but it was it was it was challenging. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a different it's a different animal. It's a much bigger machine. Supernatural is. Um, yeah, to say it's a much you driving a much bigger car than we did. At yeah, Kixicon. exactly. Um, although I do think that doing Kixicon sort of helped me more. I mean, was great schooling for that idea. Put, put your mind in that in that head. Did you enjoy it? I did. I did. Uh, I just wrapped the episode uh, a couple nights ago, so I uh, it just kind of still coming off the the whirlwind experience. But I did. I did. I enjoyed it a ton. Look, anytime I'm given the opportunity to direct an episode of Supernatural, I'm a kid in a candy store. I love doing it. It's a blast for me, um, and it's, ne it's a never-ending challenge. I, you know, I've directed five episodes of that show now, and and thank you. And that still is, in the, in the grand scheme of directors, that's nothing. That's barely having started. You know, I'm still very new, so it's a learning, huge learning curve. And being involved in it was uh, really tricky. I will say that the, obviously, you, you, when you're doing that, if you're in front of the lens, for whatever reason, you're in front of the lens and behind it, you trust your, your DP and your camera operators, and, which I do because I know these guys quite well. And they know the characters very well because they've been on the show since it started. But you also really have a great ally in Jared Jensen, who Jensen's done it. You know, he's directed himself. <clears throat> and so before I took on the challenge, I had dinner with Jared Jensen, talked about what worked for them, what didn't work for them. And I say them because it's very much a team sport, even though Jensen was directing. Uh, you know, Sam and Dean are actually linked as performers. And so Jensen became a really handy, Jensen, sorry, Jared became a good sounding board for Jensen when Jensen was directing himself to be sure that the performance was correct. You know, like he said to Jared, go, uh, I think you're thinking about camera, not about what Dean is doing. So Jensen leaned on Jared a lot for that moment. And so I took a lot from that, you know, from their experience to try to use it for my experience and, and you can lean on the people who I trust who, who care that the episode goes well. So Thank fingers crossed it went well. We'll find out. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. I'm sure I looked like a crazy man going back and running it back and forth. I know you're like, you're like, you're in something, and you're like, no, you don't. Cut. Uh, are we? Are we good? Like you're in the middle of the moment, and you're saying action. Got it's very strange. Um, all right, you over there. Okay, this is for Richard. All right. Uh, what was your reaction when Brianna and uh, Kim hosted? What was your reaction to all their antics? I wasn't here. <laughs> did Did anybody tell you what they were doing? No. But I mean, I'm sure they did great. Like con? Uh, I don't remember, but they, I wasn't here for it. But I heard they were great. Okay. What, I'm missing something. There's Is there just, something specific they did? Yeah, it's well, they called out. it porn con. No, they called it porn goober, because I invented that three years earlier. Oh, okay. It, it had been porn goober every year. Oh, okay. That, that had been a convention that I, but they took it and made it dirtier, is what I heard. So. <laughs> That, that's good. They're very talented people. I'm glad they got a chance to do it. And hopefully, I would love to see them host again. Yes. <laughs> you. Hi. Um, my question is, if um, Rob were to, like, if you were to write an episode and Rich, you were to direct it, how would that go? Like, ideally, would it be funny? Would it be dramatic? How would that go? It'd be, uh, if, I, if I know Robbie's writing like I think I do, there'd be a lot of nudity. <laughs> Guess I'd be in it. First of all, I'm smart. Your wife would. 
We open up that shirtless. And, and 42 minutes later, credit cards are going up, credit cards are going up. Slowest pullback ever. You start one man pube on my hair and just... Slow pullback. One, one inch a minute and you finally get back and it just almost shows my eyes and pushes back into my chest. At some, at some point you say, I'm back, bitches. And the name of the episode is, I'm back, bitches. Good writing, Robo. Thanks, buddy. Hey, that's that's a good writing. One shot. Hey. No, that's it. And also, that is lunch. And we're meant to wrap. Thank you for writing Thank to my, my strong suit. Thank you. Uh, you. Hello. Hey. So, my question is sort of for all of you. Okay. Um, Matt, we know you're in General Hospital, and I, from what I've heard, you've been killing it. I'm not a soap opera fan, so I, I haven't seen it. Well, you better watch it. <laughs> I'll catch up. I'm on it, and apparently I'm killing it. Don't you want to see that shit? I do. I want to watch it. Yes. So, my question is um, for Rob and Richard. If you guys oh. could be on a soap opera, which one would you want to be on, and what kind of character would you want to play? And Matt, if you could change the character you're playing, like what other kind? I want to be on Matt so far, I'm playing his boyfriend. <laughs> I'd like to be on Matt so far, playing his ex boyfriend. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> like, writes itself. Writes itself. I would like to change my character from a neurosurgeon and priest to a troubled, in the closet, love triangle maniac who can't decide. <laughs> Who can't decide whether to move forward or go back to the past. Yeah. Is it going to be Matt? Is it going to be him? Or is it going to be me? You got to choose, man! You got to choose! We can't keep going on There's only one way to settle this, gentlemen, and you know what I'm going to say. Pillow fight! Yes. <laughs> just like Rob. Just like a lot of that. And then, like, somewhere in the middle, of me getting beat up with the pillow and my shirt flies off. And then next thing you know, I'm like, oh, Rob, you don't need these pants. And then I'm like, Rich, help me get my pants off. I'll take yours off. And then all of a sudden, we just stare at each other and they push in for the end of the scene for three minutes. It's just such a possible scene. You got your eyes, I'm going to crouch. It's just like this. Rich is hanging me from my eyes and pushing in. Matt, who is this? Based on how you read in the script and based on how Jensen acted that scene. That's a really good question. Um, yeah, so in that scene, I mean, the, the, the lines didn't change. That you know, he is saying basically, where have you been when we needed you most? You weren't here. How is that caring for us? And he saw that as a very emotional thing, vulnerable thing to say, rather than listen to you. And Dean doesn't often go there, and Jensen knew he really wanted to go there with this. And so he said, as an actor, to me, are you okay if I have them do my side of the scene first so that you can see what I'm doing for when the camera turns around and gets you? And I said, absolutely. So the camera's on him, and he starts saying this thing, and he starts crying. Now, first of all, step outside of it. I'm just Rob Benedict, the actor, coming out to work with my buddies on season 11 of a show. In season 11 of a show like this, you don't normally see the actor given 110% to a scene like this. He, he, I was just blown away. Just the, his acting ability and how invested he was still. It's just such a, it's, it just means so much. And, you, and you, you bring your A game when you work on that show because you know how much it still means to everybody working on it. No one's phoning it in, right? And so anyway, I saw what he did. It was amazing. They did a second take, he cried again. Um, and then they turned around to me and what was hard for me is in that situation, with a son telling his dad, why did you leave me? 
Just because that's really what it was, right? It's him saying to God, but I guess what I also say to him is I'm not your father, right? I'm not John Winchester. Um, but I, I, I throb, empathize with him in that scene. So it was hard for me, a challenge for me is to then actually be the father and, and, and take that and then, and then ultimately turn it into, I understand you're angry, but I'm, you're, you're projecting something else onto me and that's not what this is about. It's basically what it was for me, but it helped immensely to see what he did first because I would have approached the whole thing differently. Um, but I, I specifically remember that scene very, very clearly. And watched him cry and going, fuck, what am I going to do? Because <laughs> I wanted to fucking give him a hug. <laughs> but Chuck slash God's not giving him a hug. Because he's not that kind of father figure. And, and ultimately I think that was good, you know. Because what he's saying is I need you to man up and do the things that I can't be here on earth to do for you. And so that's ultimately what I think the, the seed of that scene was. And so that was the approach that I have. But it ultimately was therapeutic for me too. There's another side of that, that, that conversation. So for me personally, it meant a lot to, to, to embody the other side of that conversation. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hey. Uh, my question is for Rob, also. Yeah. Hello. Um, what do you think God would think about his grandchild, and do you think they will interact at some point? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I've been watching this season, and uh, it's really tough as God, because they first they talk about me all the time, and I'll be like, I'm right here. <laughs> and yeah, I'm dying to meet him. I mean, you know, when you think about it, I have a lot of kids, you know what I mean? <laughs> and the whole earth is kind of my family, my children. Oh, this is blood. I'm God and whatnot. But yeah, I'd love to meet him. The little guy, little rug rat. <laughs> He should, he should give us like, five dollars for his birthday. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, take him to the movies. That'd be fun. We just have our granddaddy son a day together. But uh, I'll tell you, when Lucifer was in that, he, he went up to heaven and he was in that white room where he sat on the white throne and stuff. I almost threw my beer at the television. <laughs> <laughs> and his first falling other rock is like, I almost just blew my coke right at the thing. <laughs> The beer. I just told the prostitutes, get out. I need a minute. <laughs> the image of you. <laughs> I, I had to throw open the curtains and let the daylight in. I left up from my water bed. I threw my hair when he locked that TV like a dart. That did kill me. We're done. I have got to do it. <laughs> First time I felt real emotion in six years. <laughs> we'll finish the body waxing tomorrow. I am just so. Finish my tequila, cut out the bottle, and let the daylight at 11:30 in the morning. I kicked, well, I kicked my very last puppy, and I was just. Yeah. I'm pissed. You finish with just half a manscaping completed, and you're like. Oh. Anyway, it made me angry. Made me angry. Made me angry. <laughs> Um, anyway, but yes, I'd love to meet my grandson, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll happen at some point. I just stomped my crack pipe in. <laughs> Are you? Uh, first off, y'all are amazing. Thank you. Uh, I just, I can't wait to go to work on Monday, because when I tell people I talked to God this weekend, no one's going to believe that you talk to God. Or that God keeps uh, drugs in his beehole. God's pros, God's apparently, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, so uh, when I was growing up, I didn't have the greatest parental structure, so I kind of fell to Disney movies to teach me my values. Um, I'm just wondering which each of your favorite Disney movies are. Moana. Woo! You're welcome. I, got go. I love Pixar, I love Disney movies, I love them. I'm gonna go with uh, Little Mermaid. I love Little Mermaid. I love Robin. I love Frozen. I love Frozen. I thought you were Frozen. Guy. No, I love, I love Frozen. But Little Mermaid and me, Sebastian. See you just over here. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you can't talk about this. 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 I'm not 
take it from me. Take it from Ron, your turn. Ron, your turn. Right. Uh, geez. I, you know, I, I love uh, all the Pixar movies and Disney movies. Uh, but my favorite, I really love Aladdin. I like Aladdin. Yeah. I think, uh, Aladdin. We did Aladdin uh, last night. Did we do a whole new world last night? Yeah. yeah. I love Aladdin. I love, uh, you know, Robin Williams is just amazing. And, uh, and that Jasmine, boy, she's a looker. <laughs> You're the Jasmine guy in Cincinnati. I'm a Majestic Rabbit man myself. I get the draw. I get the draw. She's pretty. Anyway, thank you. thanks for your question. All right, so guys, I'm going to segue into something uh, different right now. So from karaoke, you guys may know that uh, we have a space between the stage and the people. It's called Moose Knuckle Corridor. I know you know that. It's called Moose Knuckle Corridor because... Uh, last year, when they first put that uh, gap in for the safety of people because some actors from another show had gotten too hammered and fallen off the stage and hurt other people. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, they put, they insisted we create a corridor here, a safe zone, if you will. Uh, and we call it Moose Knuckle Corridor because at that first karaoke party, when that thing was instituted, Matt wore uh, a, 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 a a, an outfit that held no secrets. Uh, and, uh, it was called a, sing a singlet. It was fitting, and it, it, any questions uh, were, were certainly answered that night. And, so, and, and the, because of where Matt was standing, where they were, it was pretty much a direct uh, line of sight thing. So it became Moose Knuckle Corridor because you were forced to stare at his Moose Knuckle all night now. And just by the way, I can feel each and every one of you looking at my crotch right now. Stop. At any point. Well, you can hear about the photos, there's plenty. Now, here's the thing. This is that outfit. We are auctioning this off for random acts for charity. The three of us are signing it, and every actor here, whoever buys this, every actor here this weekend, including Jared, Jensen, and Misha, will be signing this. You just literally, this is your front of the line pass. You go to the front of the line, they will sign this for you all weekend long. So this is Matt's original Moose Knuckle Ensemble <laughs> that's going to be signed by all three of us. Thank you, Rob. Oh my God. Uh, and everybody involved in the show, and it's <laughs> going for a good charity. So Matthew, I turn the auctioning over to you, buddy. You Matt, know, I like the auctioning thing. I know you do, you're good at it. And so I'm like, you're going to Yeah. Wait, wait, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do this. Matt's gonna put it on everyone. We're gonna put it on everyone. Go back there, put it on properly. I'll, I'll just turn it on. <laughs> Matt's gonna put it on, and then he's gonna come out of here, and you guys are gonna bid, and we're gonna raise some money for a great cause. Uh, because one thing that the Super has done really well. A lot of people do a lot of TV and do a lot of things with their fame. Nobody has channeled their fame into more good than Misha Collins. I've never seen that. Everybody channeled their social media influence and popularity into uh, the kind of charitable works he did, the world would be a much, much better place. He's a great example to everybody, and we're proud to have him uh, be our sort of uh, team leader here as far as charitable works. Right, right, right. Now, there he is, Matt, take your microphone. Take your microphone. I don't know how to get my Take your microphone and go raise some money. Go. we got to sign it first. We'll sign it now. I'm signing it. You're signing it right now. Sign it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm starting the bidding at. What do I, do I just start at any special number? No. Where are you going? Here you go. Five dollars. Do I have five dollars? Do I have five? I have five in the front. Fifty dollars. We're going fifty dollars. We have fifty dollars everywhere. A hundred dollars. Do we have a hundred dollars for charity? We're talking charity here. There are so many. Wait, what'd you say? Five hundred. Five hundred. We have five hundred dollars. Raise your hand, ma'am. Where are you? I lost you. There you are. We have five hundred dollars right here. We have five fifty anywhere in the room. We have. Five 50 over here. One thousand dollars to Max Charity. We have a thousand dollars over here. Do we have eleven hundred dollars anywhere? Do we have eleven hundred? Eleven hundred right here. Uh, yeah. Look at Jared, Jensen, and Misha signing Matt's Moose Knuckle. Let's raise the money. Right here. What do we have? Where, where's the next? Call it out. What do you want? Twelve hundred. We have twelve hundred over here. Do we have thirteen hundred anywhere? We have twelve hundred going once. We have thirteen hundred right here. We have thirteen hundred. Do we have thirteen fifty? We have fourteen hundred. 
1450. We have 1450. Do we have 1500? Do we have 1500 somewhere? What is it? 1500. 1600. 1600 going once, going twice. You got us in the back. In the back. We have 1600 right here. 1600. 1600. Do we have 1650? We have 2000 right here. This goes to Random Max Charity invented by an angel oh himself. And I'm just, I'm just going to say this. I don't know where you live or your decor, but there's no room that wouldn't look great without this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have 2000, 2000, I have 2100. Right here. Right here. Right there. Right there. I can't see you. What are we asking? 2200? Right over there. 2200 2200 right here? We have $2,200 going to charity. This yeah. might be the last call, ladies and gentlemen. 2300 oh, We have 2300 in the front. We have 2400 in the back. We're staying at 23 24 24 23 23 Can't make a decision. We're all confused. It's okay. We're moving forward. Anybody? We are at 2300 going once. $2,300 going once. 2300 going twice. 2400 <laughs> Twenty-four hundred. Twenty-five hundred such a growing once. Twenty-five hundred in the front. Twenty-five fifty in the back. Twenty-five fifty. You're saying no, but I see yes in your eyes. How can you see your eyes? She's looking at your crutch. That's all right. My crutch has one eye of his own. Twenty-five fifty. Twenty-five Two and a half times? <laughs> two and three quarters. <laughs> Do we have 2550 anywhere in the house? Come on. It's for charity. <laughs> I believe we are. 